Hello, I'm Makami and I'm a photographer based in Sydney. So today I'm going to share a little bit of my edits with you. And usually I go for the things that people tell me not to do. So today I'm going to share a little bit of my secrets. Recently I did a shoot. It was like outdoors, so like no studio required. But even though I still want to bring a very like surreal, outworldly look. And then we're going to achieve this with Photoshop. Now I'm going to walk you through the gear that I use for this shoot. And then again, that's the gear that I have, but you can literally use um, any camera that you have. But the one that I use for this shoot is the Canon R5 Mark II, um, 2470 lens, 2.8. And then it's always nice to have like a second lens as well. My second lens was a 70-200, um, 2.8 as well. I also had a little flash with me. Now come with me to do some edits. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna start sharing a little bit of those secrets that I told you about. And then I'm gonna start in Lightroom. I took this image as a challenge. So this is the before and after, which is like really funny because the difference is already like so big. You can barely see like the model's face. Canon's camera did a very good job in like still collecting information here. But that basically happened because I had the flash and then I came a little bit too close from the model. These things happen, you have to keep adjusting all the time when you're shooting like manually. But again, I selected this one because I did think it was going to be a good challenge. So when I bring to Photoshop, I will just create a new layer because of course, like you just wanna have control over like all the layers that you're working on. So I'm just gonna call this one, the skin one and I'm just gonna start like clearing up a little bit of like some like little marks and like little pimples there I find. Um, for this one, I'm gonna use the um, patch tool. Um, usually I just like go for the area that I want and then just like look for like a clearer area. I'm gonna do like use the stamp tool just to fill up this gap here of the model's brows. So we're gonna play a little bit with the curves now. It's one of my favorite parts. I think that that's, that's where the magic is actually. But usually what I do as well, I just come here like in the middle and then like I break it a bit because this gives more of a soft look, almost bringing back the overexposure, but again, like this time controlled. For like the kind of work that I do, and then this one specifically, it's just more about like having fun and creating something beautiful. So I had so many times, like, not, not many times, but like a couple of times I had photographers telling me like, never change the curves, um, just because that can like mess it up the colors, but then that's what I find fun and interesting. So here I'm gonna like merge these two layers because I want um, like a top layer. Always like love working on the top layer. Okay, so because the opacity is here in 64%, I will just like double the skin layer and then I'll merge that. That's again like how I would do it. I would merge it with the layer that I want on top. So yeah, like now it's 100% and then here when I merge it with the curves layer, um, like all the edits will come to this top layer, which sometimes I feel it's so handy to have. So here I'm just gonna do like a more aggressive dodge and burn, just to make like the model's feature pop a little bit. So here again, just like doing the dodge tool, I'm gonna bring to the model's eyes and now the burn tool, I'm just gonna create some, just like bring some of the shadows back. Like and that's the before and that's the after. Okay, so now I finished like with the first image, let's go to the second one. So like here, I'm gonna start creating a new layer and something that catches my attention straight away is these people here in the back, which kind of like destroys the whole like whimsical look because it brings people back to reality because like that's a car. So let's get rid of this weird background. So what I'm gonna use here is just the generative AI. So I basically select the area that I don't like. I click on generative fill 
and most of the times I don't write anything. I just click generate and then usually it's pretty good and it's very like straightforward. You see? Perfect. The AI just literally read my mind and gave me some options. Yeah, let's kind of like see the whole image. So we're gonna have like a better idea of how it looks like. So now we're gonna go to the second layer and then we're gonna do the same thing with this area over here and generative fill and generate. Guys, what the hell? Like, I love AIs and it still like gives you options. Okay, let's do the same thing. So let's go back and see if it makes too much of a difference. I kind of like, I kind of like the second option. So like what I'm gonna do here is like, I'm gonna merge them all, but like I don't wanna like lose all the layers. So I'm gonna press command option E and then that's gonna give me like a merged layer on top. I'm just gonna do a couple of more of, of selections because I do want this background a little bit cleaner. And I'm gonna create another layer just to have like a working layer. Maybe like, let me, let me name it grass. Select the lasso tool. And I'm also gonna select the multiple, like this little button here that like you can select like multiple times, not just one. That's gonna save you time. Okay, done. Incredible. I'm just gonna like merge this one with the grass. Okay, so I'm gonna double this layer here and I'm gonna create a folder and I'm just gonna put background. And then here I'm gonna start editing the colors a bit. So now I'm gonna like double this layer here, Command J. And here what I wanna do is I wanna select an object. So like I want to separate the subject to the background. So if you just go to the object selection tool and then you click on the subject is it's not completely perfect so now what i would do is i'll go to quick selection tool and i'll just get a little bit closer and select the areas that photoshop missed excellent okay so here what i'm gonna do is like pay attention because this part is a bit complex but it's very like important so you're gonna create a mask and then because I selected um, the model, so like you see in white, that's what's selected now. So like everything that I apply to this mask will change the model, um, only the model, not the background. So because I also want a layer for just the background, I'm gonna press Command J. And then here in the mask layer, I'm gonna press Command I. So like now the top one is background and then the bottom one is subject. And because I want to play a little bit just of the background, let's start with the background, let's go to the curves. And then here I'm going to go straight to the blue. You see how like everything is changing here, but we just want the background to change. So like for this to happen, I'm just going to like put my mouse on top of it, like not click and then press option. And then this little arrow will show up and then I click here. And then that means that like whatever I do now in these curves, it will just change. That's very important because here it's gonna like help you to just edit the background because I want the model like to pop a little bit more. What I'm gonna do here is play a little bit of the red curve. Okay, I think I love the blue background. Again, it becomes more like mystical, magical. And then here for um, the model, I'm probably just gonna like play a little bit with the RGB curve just to make her pop a little bit. So we're gonna go to selective color. And now like one last thing just to finish the blend. I'm gonna like play with the curves a little bit more. I just think it blends better. And that's the before and after. Okay guys, so that's what I was going to share with you today. I hope you learned and I hope like you will explore a little bit more of the curves and then the techniques that we um, did together today. And then I can't wait to see the results.